Hello guys, welcome back to another video. It feels so 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 good to be back. So while studying for antenna and wave propagation, there are different types of numerical problems that can come in. So the numerical problems that can be asked from antenna and wave propagation are mainly direct substitution. There's nothing much to think about it. Well, my name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So let us consider this particular question. A parabolic dish antenna has a gain of 40 decibels. It operates at a frequency of 11 gigahertz with 65% efficiency. Find the required diameter of the dish antenna. So here from this question we have to find the diameter of a dish antenna with which we can have a particular gain of 40 decibels and operating at 11 gigahertz frequency with 65% efficiency. So first let us write down the parameters that we have. The frequency f is equal to 11 gigahertz which is equal to 11 into 10 raised to 9 hertz and now we know the formula c is equal to f lambda and therefore from this the wavelength is obtained as lambda is equal to c by f that is equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 divided by f is 11 into 10 raised to 9 which is equal to 3 by 110. So let it be like this for the time being. Now here the efficiency eta is given as 65% which is equal to 65 by 100 which is equal to 0.65. Now the formula for the directivity is given as d is equal to 4 pi by lambda squared into a where a is the area which is given as a is equal to pi d squared by 4 where this d is the diameter so therefore it is this d that we have to find but 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 we know the formula d is equal to the gain g by eta so therefore we can simply just compare these two values and find the value of the diameter d so therefore g by eta is equal to 4 pi by lambda squared into a is pi d squared by 4 here 4 and 4 gets cancelled and therefore which is equal to pi d by lambda the whole squared as simple as that and now on substituting these values over here and obtaining the value of d we can simply get the value of the diameter d is equal to 1.1 meters as simple as that it is direct substitution and from direct substitution we will simply get the value so here the one thing that we have to keep in your mind is that the gain is given in terms of decibels you have to convert it into a normal value that is the one thing you have to keep in mind and then substitute it over here for the different values and the parameters and when you get we'll get d squared is equal to so this is the value of the diameter d so once we find the value of d squared we can simply take the root of this value which is equal to 1.1 meters as simple as that guys. so it is basically simple substitution the types of questions that is asked over here is basically simple substitution all you have to know is the different formulas that have to be used so let us see a different type of question now so now the next question a transmitter antenna transmits 10 watts of power at 100 megahertz the gain of the antenna is given as 3 the receiver antenna is at a distance of 5 kilometers from the transmitter and is identical to the transmitter that sounds interesting so what are the things that we have to find first find the power density of the receiver antenna the electric field intensity of the receiver antenna and lastly the power that is received by the receiver antenna so first let us see the power density of the receiver antenna so the formula for the power density is given as PD is equal to the output power P out into the gain of the transmitter antenna GTX divided by 4 pi D squared. Here D is the distance between the transmitter antenna and the receiver antenna and P out is the output power of the transmitter antenna and G is the gain of the transmitter antenna. So all these parameters are given here. So simply on substituting those parameters we get PD is equal to the output power is 10 watts. 10 into the gain is given as 3, 3 divided by 4 into pi into d square, d is 5 kilometers. So 5 into 5 into 10 raised to 6 because kilometers has to be converted to meters which is equal to 9.54 into 10 raised to minus 8. So that is the value of the power density. Next we have to find the value of the electric field intensity of the receiver antenna. So now the equation for the electric field is given as E is equal to root of 30 into P out 
into gain G divided by distance between the two antennas T. Simply on substituting, we get the value of this as 6 into 10 raised to minus 3 volt per meter. So this is the equation for finding the electric field. And now, lastly, we have to find the power that is received by the receiver antenna. That can be found out using the equation of Friss transmission equation. The Friss transmission equation is given as power at the receiver antenna PR is equal to power of the transmitter antenna PT into gain of the transmitter antenna into the gain of the receiver antenna into the wavelength squared lambda squared divided by 4 pi r the whole whole square so here we know the value of frequency which is given as 100 megahertz so f is equal to 100 megahertz so therefore we know that c is equal to f lambda so therefore from this lambda is equal to c by f which is equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 divided by f is 100 megahertz so 100 into 10 raised to 6 so this we get the value of this is equal to 3. So therefore on substituting this over here and the value of the gain and the power we get this is equal to 10 into the gain of the transmitter antenna is given as 3. And the gain of the receiver antenna is also 3 because they are both identical to each other. And lambda squared that is wavelength squared 3 into 3. The whole divided by 4 pi r the whole squared. 4 into pi into 5 into 10 raised to 3 the whole square. We get this equal to 2.0538 into 10 raised to minus 7. So these are the types of questions that can be asked in the case of your antenna and wave propagation examinations. That is, if you know the formula, it's direct substitution. So once you get a particular question, first you have to write down the parameters that are given in a particular question. For instance, if it is this question that is asked, so here the first thing we have to deduce is that an antenna transmits 10 watts of power. So we have to first write down the power that is transmitted is 10 watts. And now at a frequency of 100 megahertz. So then we have to write down the frequency f is equal to 100 megahertz. And now the gain is 3. Now we have to write down the value of gain g is equal to 3. And then the distance d is 5 kilometers. Then we have to write down the value of the distance that is 5 kilometers. So once you have the values aligned one after each other, then it will be easy for you guys to recollect which formula has to be used for the purpose of obtaining the answer for your numerical questions. As simple as that. Th these those are just simple two types of questions that I just explained so that you guys can have an idea as in how you can do a numerical problem if it is asked from antenna and wave propagation. So I hope you guys now have a brief understanding of how you can do a numerical problem from antenna and wave propagation. And if you guys found this video informative, do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.